Okay, so we let's start. Okay, so last class uh, we looked at uh, you know a very important aspect of uh, preaching, which is uh, we looked at the person, the preacher. Um, and we looked at uh, what qualifies a person to, you know, preach the word of God. We also looked at um, uh, about the call, like right? call itself, because uh, um, many times uh, we, if you're not convinced of the call of God uh, for us to handle the word of God, for us to be communicators of the word of God, then uh, we're not really uh really serious about it or we don't uh, understand the 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 weightiness of the responsibility right so um it's important that we uh, understand it's important that we uh, be convinced of the call and with regards to the call we, we we also saw that um all of us are in a sense we are called to this right it is our duty it is our responsibility to be preachers of the gospel to be communicators of the gospel um so the question is why why do we say that and the answer is in the great commission right the answer is in the in the, in the great commission that uh, there's several you know ways we can look at it one is of course very clear that all of us as disciples as followers of the lord jesus christ we are commissioned to, with this message right to preach the gospel to every creature right to go to every nation i mean to every people group to preach the gospel and to teach all that the lord jesus has taught okay and uh, baptizing them in the name of the father son and the holy spirit so so that's the responsibility that's the call of every a disciple and every believer now how this happens and in what way it happens you know that's different um, well, it could be a fivefold specific fivefold call, like we see in Ephesians chapter four, right? Where some are called to be, where some are called to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Now, this is not for all, but it is for some, and it is as the Lord desires, right? So He places some to be this now even you're going to be i'm sure i'm sure you'll be learning about the fivefold ministry the ministry of the evangelist pastor teacher this this class uh, this session right and the semester so you learn that okay uh you know we the, these gifts flow together one could be a pastor teacher or an apostle prophet and you know it, it's a gift mix that that is there but this is something that we don't take for ourselves but um, you know the lord places us in the body of Christ with this specific call. Okay, so um, that's something that we uh, that we understand. So it could happen that way, or it could happen in any other way because we see also that uh, uh, we are equipped. The saints in the same passage, Ephesians chapter four, we see that the saints are equipped for the work of ministry. Okay, for the work of serving. So uh, and when we look at uh, uh, passages like Romans chapter twelve where the gifts are listed, 1 Corinthians 12, where the gifts are listed, we see that we are placed in the body of Christ uh, in different ways, uh, in different uh, capacities, uh, and to serve one another, to minister to one another. Okay, So even in that, there is the communication of the, um, of the word of God. There's a preaching of the word of God. So it may not be a very formal podium, pulpit, stadium kind of a ministry, but it could be in different ways, right? And some practical ways in which we can uh, look at, uh, like if you consider, if you see the way church is set up, you know, it could be a home group, it could be a life group, it could be, uh, you know, it could be uh, meetings like that, like a house prayer meeting and so on, but then you you are ministering the word, right? So we see that. And then the, the importance of the person, we looked at character, we looked at, uh, you know, more than ability and charisma and gifting. Character is very important because that's going to be the foundation, right? If you have all that and if you do not have character, then they, there's going to be cracks in the foundation. It's, it's going to fall and it's going to be very embarrassing. It's going to be painful and uh, it's going to cause damage for a whole lot of other people as well. 
like not only for us personally but for those of us um those those lives who are connected to our lives you know family friends people who look up to us and it's going to be uh, it, it causes a lot of damage you know and we see you know over and over again you know in the church and and, and i'm sure if you studied church history you see that people uh, you know uh, uh losing uh, this aspect of their ministry, you know, because of their personal choices, personal because of character flaws, and then we see that kind of damage, you know, it creates in the church, and also uh, the kind of damage you know, it gives an opportunity for the enemy to speak ill of, you know, the church and uh, speak ill of Christ. We're definitely not uh, bringing glory to God uh, if we do that. So the importance of character, the importance of uh, you know the lifestyle. So. So we, we saw all that. Okay. So today what we'll do is we'll look at uh, the message, the content of the message, the because the message is very important, because that is what we are communicating. So it's important uh, what we communicate, uh, what we preach. Okay, it's of it's of great importance. Now when we when we look at that, uh, when we consider that, um, uh, again I want to say that life is also important. Right, uh, the, because the life um, uh, uh, is it speaks volumes. It speaks louder, right? Uh, and no matter how clear, articulate, eloquent the message is, if the life is not lived, uh, is it, it, it's, it's not a life of integrity. It's not a life of character. Then it cancel out cancels out the most wonderful, the beautiful of messages. Yeah, you know. Uh, it cancels it out. So, the importance of life lived well, uh, and that is why we looked at it earlier. Now, let's look at the message, right? the content of the message, the, the the nature of the message itself. Okay. Now, we need to understand that um, while there are several things that could be spoken, shared, you know, and there are several kinds of uh, you know ways in which communication happens. Uh, there could be encouragement. Um, there could be exhortation, and so on. The, the the backbone of it is the word of God. Okay, uh, the 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 foundation is the word of God. Now the word of God is our reference point. The word of well, the word of God is what is uh, uh, what the message is based on. It means everything that we declare its foundation should be in the word everything that we share communicate um you know the, the foundation should be the word of god okay. it, 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 uh, take us to a couple of scriptures uh, first one being of uh, uh, let's go to uh, one of peter's epistles and uh, just let's go Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm at First Peter chapter four, okay, and verse eleven. Right. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory. And the dominion forever and ever. So let him speak as the oracles of God, meaning you are speaking the heart and mind of God. You're speaking as a spokesperson for God. Okay. Um, so so that's that's very, very important. So when we when the when the word is uh, what is communicated, you're speaking on behalf of God, you are speaking as an oracle of God. Okay, this is what God says. So, uh, if we do not speak from the Word, you know, uh, the chances are that we could be speaking from ourselves, meaning our own assumptions, our own presumptions, which may not be based on the Word of God. Okay, so it's very important to be word centric. Okay, so Paul also, when he when he's writing to Timothy. He gives a couple of instructions. Let's look at those. Okay. Um, First Timothy. Um, uh, 
First Timothy, uh, right there at chapter 1 and verse 3. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, okay, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is from a pure heart, is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the Lord is good, the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Okay, uh, and then he goes on to explain about the law. And then verse 11, he says, according to the God, glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Uh, verse 10, he says, if there's any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Okay, so he's talking about sound doctrine. He's talking about teaching. Uh, he's saying that if you go away from this, you're going to give heed or you're going to listen to or, uh, you know, give weightage to fables. Uh, which means stories with fables are stories with uh, with good moral uh, lessons, right? Uh, but they they're not the you know, it's not the word of God. So this could be it could have good moral lessons. It could be uh, you know it, it could be, but it's a story. Okay. So he's saying not give heed to fables and endless genealogies. So what is the, what do those do? Those cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith okay so godly edification happens uh, because of our faith and because of our faith in god because of our faith in god's word and that is why he says you know charge some that they teach no other doctrine okay let there be no other teaching so that's the first thing that he uh that paul writes and he and he tells timothy you know I left you there with this purpose that you teach no other doctrine. Let the teaching be the word of God. Okay, and um, and when you uh, you know when you go down to let's say uh, chapter four. Okay, chapter four also uh, he he gives the same thing, same instruction. Right, verse six. If you see. Um, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. Uh, and then he goes on to say uh, in verse 12, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come... Give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Okay. Um, verse 16. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So it's very, very clear uh, about what you should teach, what you should give heed to. Uh, because doing the opposite of that or steering away from that is instead of uh, in, instead of bringing in edification it creates strife right? so what we communicate uh, if it's not the word of god it's 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 not going to be profitable it's not going to be useful like right? spiritually speaking like people might be excited people might find some things funny but at the end of the day if the con content of what we are sharing is not from faith or is if not the word of god then it's gone not going to result in um, uh, it's not going to result in faith okay um, rosalyn what page are we on we are looking at chapter 5 uh, ministry of the word so it's uh, page 15 i guess in my notes the importance of the ministry of god's word right okay Page fifteen. Uh, is page fifteen the? Uh, is, is it page fifteen and all the other notes? Yeah, it is. Okay. 
Right. So the importance of uh, you know God's word. So um, it it says uh, it, it, if you, if you look at um, you know First Peter, First Peter, we see that it creates um, a lot of. Uh, I'm sorry, First Timothy itself. It says uh, it creates disputes. Um, it creates wrong understanding. It doesn't result in faith. Okay. So so the importance of speaking from God's word. Okay. So let's let's look at the notes. And the first thing we see there is that um, uh, God operates by His Word. Okay. Now the the Bible, the Word of God, is God's thoughts, His ideas, His opinion, His promise, His instruction, all that, right? So He operates through that. Yes, He He is able to go beyond it. But he operates through the word of God. So if the word of God is is something we, we understand that it, it carries intrinsically the power of God. The word of God is something that will produce fruit. Okay, so the message needs to be based on the word of God. Now it, it might sound like, you know, uh, isn't 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 that the natural thing? Well, it was not always so, and it, it is not always so. It is not so, you know, even today. Uh, well, since the church and the minister of God is supposed to give importance to the word of God, we know that uh, it was not so. And especially during the dark ages, the word was completely neglected, completely neglected. It was kept away from people. Uh, it was changed, you know, practically physically changed and kept, uh, changed and kept, uh, and uh, people did not have access to the word of God. Okay, and uh, and we know what happened through the Reformation, the uh, the translations, and so it was made available for the common man to be able to read and understand in his or her own language. Right, so it was not so. So even today, uh, well, we don't have that kind of a thing. You know, we have uh, uh, different you know uh, uh, ways in which we can read the Word of God electronically and uh, you know other ways and we have audio, audio bibles and everything there is there are wonderful ways and methods but you know in the church if we do not preach the word of god but if we're going to preach something which is uh, apart from the word you know if you're giving some information which is not based on the word then it's not going to produce effort effect you know it's not going to produce fruit because faith will result faith is something which is spiritual and it will be produced only by the word of god we need to understand that, right? It, and it is something that will edify, right? It is something that will bring lasting change. Okay, so when we look at um, Hebrews four, so that is what we see. Hebrews four, um, you know, these are things that we may uh, know already. Uh, this could be a reiteration of that. So Hebrews four says, "The word of God is living. The word of God is powerful, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing." even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart okay so the word of god is living powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit now that's fascinating because uh, uh it's uh it does a work which a work of discerning a work of separation which nothing else can actually do right uh, the word of god is like a sword sharper and this discerning and uh, and separation is between the soul and the spirit and we know you know we've learned about the soul and the spirit our emotions, intellect, imaginations, thoughts, everything in the soul realm, and the spirit, which is our inner man, where you know we uh, the the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy we speak the mysteries of God, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us. There's a deposit of His Word in our spirit. Uh, revelation comes to us. The Lord, Lord writes it upon our spirit. Right? He expands our capacity. Everything happens in the spirit. So we receive. The mysteries of God in our spirit man. So there's a division, it says, even to the soul and the spirit. So that's something very valuable, you know, in the sense, why is it valuable? 
So I know the difference between, okay, what is of my own imagination, what is of my own thoughts or my own thinking, not that they are less important, but I can know what is inspired by God, what is coming from God, what is the guidance that come, that is coming from God, what are the ideas and inspiration of God. I know because the Word of God is able to even discern and divide between that. Is able to divide between okay, this is actually of the emotional realm and this is of the spirit. Okay, and that only the word of God can do. And it's a very important thing, very um, valuable, uh, very important thing for us as believers, right? So it's living and powerful. So that's the word of God. So we might think, oh, it's it's so old fashioned. You know, I want to add, I want to make it even more interesting. Uh, we, we don't have to. Like I think it was Spurgeon who said, you know, about defending the word of God. He said it's like it's like defending a lion. You know, I don't have to do that. I just have to let the lion out of the cage, and the lion will do the you know it'll do the rest, it'll do its work. So, um, so we don't have to, you know, uh, be apologetic about it. We don't have to make excuses uh, for the word of God. We can. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is. Uh, you know the the old English word used there is quick, uh, and it means um, uh, to you know it it means it's alive, it's breathing, literally. You know, the quick and the dead, right? So it's not lifeless. It's it's quick in the sense it's it's breathing. It's it's full of life. Okay, um, and uh, as a figure of speech, metaphorically, it means something that is uh, that is full of vigor, right? Pulsating with life, energetic fresh and strong so that is what it means like right? it's quick and it's powerful right? active powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword which means that uh, you know it it can cut uh, and and we know you know how the word can cut and convict even the hardened of hearts right so word of god does that let's look at uh, one more uh, description, you know, Isaiah 55, um, Isaiah 55 and verses 10 and 11, right? Uh, this also we've um, read many times. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and uh, they do not return there, but water the earth, and, sorry, make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, uh, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So, so God is saying, you know, just before that, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and he talks about how the wicked should forsake uh, their thoughts and the un unrighteous man, um, forsake the way and unrighteous man his thoughts um, and return to the Lord, right? And then he says uh, about the word, so as the rain comes down from heaven and uh, and as it waters the earth and makes it makes it bring forth and but so it, you know um i'm sure you've seen you know certain terrains where before the rain and after the rain you know there's so much of freshness there's so much of growth there's so much of life you know you're, you're like wondering you know where did all this thing come from like where did all this greenery come from where where did all this beauty come from right um and uh, and it's just that it rained, and it 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 rained, and it it stirred up uh, the ground, and uh, and whatever was you know if, if you look at it, whatever was the potential in the ground, it just erupted. Right, whatever was that potential, you know, it just came to life, and it happened because rain has that quality. Rain did that. So it says, as the rain makes the land makes uh, you know to waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now that's that's another important aspect uh, of God's word. That's um, it's it's doing something. Uh, you know, uh, it's 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 creating something. It's unlocking potential. It's uh, bringing out beauty, and it's productive. Right? It's resulting in productivity that it may. Why is it doing all that? Why does the rain do all that? It may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, right? Um, so, 
so shall my word be says the lord so shall my word be in the same way the word that i send the word that i release this is what it will happen you know it's going to bring in freshness it's going to change the entire environment it's going to change the face uh, you know when when the heart receives uh, where well, there's going to be change in the life the, the it will be unrecognizable you know what seemed to be barren what seemed to be dry and lifeless it's going to come to life because that's what the word of that's what my word does it's creative it's going to bring forth the potential that is already you know there and it's going to bring it to life and it's going to be I'm sorry, the life is going to be productive. It brings forth seed to this, uh, you know, seed to the sower and and bread to the eater. You just see, you know, um, the seed to the sower, which means that uh, the sower is going to use that seed. It's going to multiply, you know, put that, put that, put that seed in the field, and it's going to, you know, bring forth a harvest. And bread to the eater, the finished product of that end result of that whole thing of sowing and reaping. The end product is bread to the eater. So the Lord is saying, okay, there's going to be, you know, even more harvest and also the end product, which will nourish a person uh, physically, physically, you know. Um, so that's, that's what God's saying. It, it, this is what uh, it will do. So you see the importance of carrying that word, okay, uh, bringing that word, um, something that is full of life, something that is powerful and uh, and obviously uh, it's it's the truth of god's word that we are communicating it's the you know the, maybe the declaration of it the explanation of it and when we when we share it it has its uh, it does its work okay by the power of the holy spirit the word does the, uh, the work okay so that is that so that is that is something that we see okay then the other thing that we see is that First uh, Thessalonians two and verse thirteen. Let's look at that. Um, okay, chapter two and verse thirteen. Okay, so Paul is saying, you know, for this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men. But as it is in truth, the word of God. Okay, so it talks about this audience, the church in Thessalonica. They received the word of God, and they received it as uh, when they, when these men preached, when this team preached, they received it. They welcomed it not as a word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. Um, the last part of it, he says, which also effectively works in you who believe. Okay, so the word of God which is eternal, which is all powerful and living and, and so on, so powerful, full of life, effectively works in us who believe. Okay, powerfully works in us who believe. So which means that the word has to be mixed with faith. It has to be received, welcomed, mixed with faith. And for all this to happen, right? So this is what the word of God will accomplish in the lives of people, uh, it becomes operational in the lives of people as we receive it, and we receive it in faith. Okay, right. Then uh, we, 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 of course, we when we when we looked at preaching, we see that okay, it's the word of an infinite God, eternal God, in the in the uh, in, 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 which He puts in our heart in finite man, in order to communicate that word which is eternal which is infinite in nature right so god chooses us with all our limitations right being finite being works in progress he chooses us to communicate his word in order to fulfill his purposes right that's the beauty of it we are actually partnering with god's mission right so he chooses us and uh, he gives us the word and he says, okay, now you go forth and you minister the word. Okay. So he, uh, uh, let's look at Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. Okay. Um, 6 and verse 4. The, the apostles, because of that whole dispute about the 
uh, about the feeding, about the di distribution of food to widows um, being neglected. So the apostles make a very uh, important decision, right? So they, they appoint the others who are, uh, who are of uh, good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, etc. And they say, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Okay, so the early church, you know, they 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 understood the importance. They realized the importance. Uh, a lot of things were happening. Like right? they were going around and they were sharing the gospel. People were coming. The people were being added to the church. A lot of supernatural things were happening. A lot of excitement. Everything was happening. And uh, uh, but they realized this. They said, "We will give ourselves to prayer and to the." Ministry of the Word. It's not that the other things were not important, that they had you know, taken care of the administrative side, um, but they, they realized that this is something that they cannot neglect. Right? Prayer and ministry of the Word. So they said, we will give ourselves continually to this. We will give ourselves continually to this. What was that? To the, minist to the prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Okay, so... Um, why do they do that? Because God had commissioned his disciples right, to carry the word, to, to communicate the word, to preach the word to uh, the people around, to the nations around. Right. So, so therefore, giving ourselves continually to this. Okay. So let's. Uh, of course, the the other word that we saw was one Thessalonians two and verse thirteen. Uh, let's look at Luke eight thirteen. Luke chapter 8 and verse 13. Luke chapter 8 is also parallel to Luke chapter, I mean, sorry, Mark chapter 4, right? Uh, talks about the, the sower and uh, uh, this, the parable of the sower, right? So, in, um, uh, so this, the word of God is like in, uh, to the seed which is sown and verse 13 talks about the fact that the ones on the rock are those when they hear they receive the word with joy and they have no root who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away okay and then uh, you know we, we can actually read the rest of the passages and on to verse um, 15 which says the ones that fell on the good ground are those having heard the word with a noble and good heart keep it and bear fruit with patience Okay, so verse 15 talks about how the good ground, hear the word, uh, keep it, and there is the uh, bearing fruit. Okay, so, so that's what the um, uh, word of God does. So this, so this aspect of sowing is a responsibility. Okay, so that's something that we see, the parable of the sower, that the sower goes and sows the seed, and the seed is the word of God. So God, is, God in his... Um, in his wisdom and in his foreknowledge, in his foresight, he has he's instituted it this way that that we as human beings, God wants us to be communicators of his word. And he wants us to proclaim his word. And we see, you know, our identity as uh, New Testament believers. He says, Okay, you are uh, you are the chosen generation, you are the your kings and your royal priesthood, and you will proclaim the virtues of him, proclaim the characteristics of God. Okay, so he has chosen us to do that, right? Okay, um, let's move on. Let's look at um, um, we look at uh, Matthew 4.4. 4. Um, talks about the Lord Jesus explaining, okay, Matthew 4 and verse 4, the Lord Jesus um saying that uh, he answered and said now his answer is in response to um response to the devil's question right and devil's um, charge uh, if you are the son of god okay, command that these stones become bread right so that is that is uh, that is what he's stating he's saying if you are if you are indeed the son of god so he's actually challenging um, the identity of the lord jesus he's saying if you are indeed who you say you are if you are indeed the son of god then do this okay and the lord jesus answers uh, and his response is very interesting he says it is written so he's referring to the word now, what is interesting is this that 
you know, he is the eternal word, right? The living word, right? And he is quoting the scriptures, uh, which is the word, right? He's quoting that and he's saying, it is written. And he's also talking about the word. And you see that. Very interesting, right? And he's saying, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Okay. Um, so very, very interesting. right? And his response to Satan's challenge and statement, um, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, by, uh, so and he used the word rhema there, but, but by rhema, right? The, which is the quickened word, it comes from God. So man shall not live by bread alone. So so what does that mean? That means that for a for a believer, one who has uh, accepted the Lord Jesus, well, there is a requirement to receive the word of God. Okay, uh, whether it's you know whether it's preached, whether it's personally received. Right? In, in various ways, whether it's uh, supernaturally received, sovereignly received from God, well, man has to receive the word of God. Man cannot just continue to live. Well, bread can sustain a person physically. Bread can enable a person to go on physically and do the things uh, what is required physically. But we know that a, uh, that a person is more than just a physical being he or she is a spiritual being and especially when you're a believer when your spirit is quickened and you're made alive in the spirit and your spirit needs my spirit needs the word of god as much as our body requires physical food for sustenance right immediately you know when you miss a meal you know that's you know your body tells you Right, this, there's something, and, uh, and 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 you you just go ahead and you see okay is there something to eat and then you know you're you're taking some some snack something you just you you know there's something that's missing right so similarly you know our spirit man requires the word of God the thing is this you know uh, uh, there is a craving in the spirit we've been designed in the spirit to receive the word of God okay but the thing is we sometimes we make do with something else we try to fill it with something else and there is a craving there's a thing that oh there's drawing it's something i i need this but then we try to fill it with something maybe oh I, maybe i need some entertainment maybe i need to you know i need uh, i need that relationship to you know to to make sure that this craving goes well we need the word of god and we need god to speak to us we need to receive it in our inner man and only then and only that satisfies and that's that in fact creates more hunger for the word of god right so okay so we see that um the lord jesus is saying that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god okay let's look at first Peter two and verse two um okay so we, we are looking at uh, you know many things that we know already right um but um, just a reiteration of that for us to know that the importance of uh, the content of what we uh, minister, right? Um, so just to know that there's something precious, something to know that to know for us to know that it's life giving. Okay, First Peter two and verse two, uh, verses one and two. Let's read. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby if indeed you have tasted that the lord is gracious okay so this is what he's saying you know do you desire you crave for the pure milk of the word okay so that causes growth and development okay so the word of god is now you know it's likened to the milk that a newborn baby craves um, which is required which is necessary for the for the for the new newborn to grow uh, and develop right so he's saying uh, so in other words he's saying the word of god is is sustenance is food the word of god is something 
which is required, which is necessary for growth and development. Okay, so uh, there's no there's no substitute for that. Okay, there's no substitute. So um, you know, so so in the church or any other you know uh, forum, uh, any other environment where we uh, handle the word, uh, where we minister, where we gather, the word of God is what will actually sustain. The word of God will what will produce growth. So for every you know minister, pastor. You know the, the thing is the they want the church to grow. We want the church, we want the believers to mature, and we want the believers to discover the call of God. So how will that happen? Well, when people come, it's an opportunity to minister the word. Minister the word that causes growth. Minister the word that that is necessary for sustenance, right? Um, maybe they're not in a place of doing that for themselves. Right, but here's an opportunity. Here, here, here here's a uh, you know a opportunity for them to receive the word which sustains, right? and here's an opportunity for them to receive the word which causes growth and maturity and development. Right, you look at it that way when you're ministering the word. Uh, you know, it's an awesome responsibility. You know, as a parent, maybe uh, you want the best food for the child. You know, you don't want to put throw in put in some junk. You, know, you want the, you want to be, you, the best food, you know, the most nutritious one, the clean and nutritious, something that will result in health. And you don't want to give something that will, and especially if something is stale and if something is, you know, uh, you know that it's doubtful. Even if it looks good, you say, okay, don't don't eat it. Right? And I, as a parent, I understand that. You know, I say, okay, don't touch it. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. It's better. It's fine. You leave it. Uh, we'll give something else. Right? Be why? Because you want. Uh, you want your child to grow well. You want it. To, you want the best thing for your child, right? So if you look at the Word of God from that angle, and you say, "Okay, here, you know, here God has placed me, and here are the people who God has given, and given responsibility and you know oversight, and I need to make sure that I share the Word. I share the Rama Word of God, and I so because it's it's going to result." And in the best way possible, so that it results in growth, development, maturity. Okay, okay. So let's look at one more scripture. Um, let's look at Romans ten and verse seventeen. Uh, Romans ten seventeen. Anyone? What does it talk about? Okay. What does it talk about? A very important aspect, right? Okay, we want to be people of faith. Uh, we want to be people who will, um, you know, faith is something unseen. And we know that uh, faith pleases God. And you know that uh, whatever God wants us to do, you know, we can, we need to live by faith in order to do that. And here, Romans 10 17 talks about the fact that. Um, Faith comes in this manner. Faith is produced in this manner, right? Faith is, uh, you know, one Corinthians twelve talks about faith being a gift of the Holy Spirit. Talks about the surge of faith um, and how faith comes. Uh, the Holy Spirit brings in that gift. Okay, but when we see here, we see that the Word of God produces faith. Faith. And here it talks talking about saving faith, right? Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So it's something that is produced in our spirit by the word of God. Okay. So uh, in all sincerity and good intentions for people to increase in faith, right? There's no other method that is available. There's no other method that's available except by the word of God. So faith in God comes when people receive the word of God because the word of God is the one which produces faith. Okay, um, so it's interesting, you know, like one Corinthians two thirteen talked about how you know we we need to receive it in faith, right? When we believe, and then you know it produces. Something in us, but also we see that it's it is the word which which causes faith to rise in us, which produces faith in us. You know, it's like a cycle. 
I need the word of God to produce faith and I need faith to receive more of the word of God. Right. So we see that. Right. So um, so we, we see we see that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which means that actively when I receive, actively when I or intentionally when I receive the word of God. Okay, so it's not something automatic, right? I need to make uh, or I need to be intentional about hearing, receiving the word of God, and it produces faith. Okay, okay, let's look at Acts 20 32, um, where um, Paul, in his address to the efficient believers, to the elders, so he says, no, so now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, okay, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Okay, the word of God, which is able to build you up okay, and give you an inheritance. So the word of God does that. Right? Uh, so. Um, so again, it's very important, you know, and, and we can go on and on. We can look at several verses, just expounding the, you know, the value of God's word and uh, 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 the beauty of God's word, the importance of God's word, right? So, so while we, so when we know this, we we see that um, I I need to be as a person who's handling the word of God, my content should be the word of God, uh, my reference point should be the word of God. Right. And uh, there's always fruit uh, when we share uh, the word of God. Okay. Right. So, so, so the thing is that uh, it's not that uh, my message should be okay. Uh, I just read verse after verse after verse. Right. It's it's not. It's just not that. Right. We know that there are several ways. Like you, you could teach the word of God, meaning that you go into the how and the why and the, you know where and etc. So you're you know, asking those questions. Uh, we can proclaim the word of God. You're declaring, okay, this is what God says. This is what, uh, you know, God's heart is. This is what the mind of God is. So, you know, you know, doing that, etc. And uh, so we can we can do it in all those ways. But the fact is that we are communicating, right, the truth of God's word. And that's the content. Okay, it's, it's so which means it's not to amuse people. It's not to entertain people. Uh, well, all that can happen. In that environment, you know, well, uh, because of human personality and because of you know how we are, uh, we can well in, in the sharing of God's word. Yes, there are certain things that are humorous, but there are certain things that are, you know, uh, that people find it very entertaining and uh, etc. All that could happen, right? But the main thing is that, uh, well, it's going to build up the person. It's going to edify the person. So, so everything that we share needs to have a scriptural backing. Right, it's from the word. Okay, uh, any questions or anything that you might uh, uh, you might want to add? Okay, any questions at all? I think at all. Okay, so you can look at this. Um, I, I don't know if you've read the book um, uh, God's Word, the Miracle Seed. Okay, you can you can download that. Um, the link is there in the notes. Can download that God's Word, the Miracle Seed. Again, it's an APC uh, publication. Uh, Pastor Ashish has written that. Um, you could download that. You could use that. Uh, you could just read through that. And uh, there's much more, right? It, it just goes into depth about um, what's God's what what God's Word is intrinsically, and what we can do with uh, you know the Word of God. Like uh, as a believer, I receive it. As a believer, I meditate upon it. Um, I, I reflect upon it. I confess it, um, and I, I, you know, I declare. I obey the word, like what we see in Joshua chapter one, verse eight, and I do all that, and experience the power of God's word. So that's a very um, a practical and a very useful book to go through. So I'd like us to read through it also. Okay, okay, we'll stop here, and then we'll continue next class uh, on Thursday, um, uh, and we will. We will finish this chapter and also look into uh, you know how to study the uh, this word of God. We're talking about the logos, how to study the word, and uh, how we can use different ways to uh, study, and it can really enrich us. Right? Okay. So we'll stop here. Thank you. God bless.